Hey everybody. Well, the format that I did last week filming on my phone ended up being the best way to do it because I was able to download the video directly from my phone. So when I made a shorter video for the time lapse and also when I put the video on YouTube for people who aren't on Facebook, it's nice and clear. So this is how we're going to do it. I also got feedback that um, the view that you had of the canvas was better. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see um, the canvas and we'll get going. Okay, let me get the camera on my tripod here. I'm not going to not going to hold it by hand. The only downside with this is that I can't see the comments while I'm working. I just have to kind of, um, you know, stop every once in a while, see if you have any questions. So if you have questions, let me know. Let me make sure that the, no, that's for me to write a comment. Okay. I'm not seeing any comments coming through yet, but that may be just because nobody's left one or, okay, I'm trying to get you at a good angle here, sorry. Um, I have to be able to reach my canvas, but you also have to be able to see it. So this is what we're painting right here. If you have not, um, you can print it off of my website and I would, there, you, there are your comments, okay had this like notification coming up so that's why I couldn't see it okay now I can see your comments and questions so a lot of you are excited about this I'm seeing and looking forward to this lesson doing glass and flowers so anyway this is what we're painting it's a picture that I took last week um painting flowers can be difficult like they're just complicated and so I wanted to start with some really simple, these are kind of individual blooms, so we can just focus on one at a time, very simple shapes. And um, this is a, a little cherry blossom stem that I cut off of a tree in my yard, and, which I love that I have a cherry tree. For those who know me well, cherries are my favorite, so it's so cool that I have a cherry tree. And the other thing that I'm gonna share about is we're going to talk about drawing and just checking your drawing because I think for some people drawing is where they really get hung up and they feel like well if I can't draw then I can't paint and actually while the two skills come together in a painting um, there are some people who are very gifted at you know it's called drafting they're very gifted draftsmen and then there are some people who are really gifted with paint and just laying the paint down, mixing the colors. And then of course the magic combination is when you can do it all together. So we work to improve all of those skills. But, um, but I think especially when you're beginning, people can get hung up on having to draw a vase or especially if we get into drawing faces and animals that can get really intimidating. So I'm gonna show you a trick. Well, there are a few tricks. Um, you know, of course you can um, measure. You can transfer a drawing to a canvas using transfer paper, that's an option. But I'm gonna show you a way that we can do it without having to use, with just using what we have, using a picture and our canvas and paint. And um, the other thing is, uh, what was the other thing? Lost my train of thought. Um, oh, the way I paint is called sight-sized. So I'm painting this exactly the same size on my canvas, or I'm going to try to anyway. If it's not exactly the same, it's okay. But generally that's what I do. So when I'm doing animals or people, I can start to measure. So I can say, all right, the width of my vase is this, so I can start to make some marks. Whoops, I don't have any color on there. But I can start to make some marks of how, you know, how wide I, I want the vase to be. Or I can use a measure, uh, you know, I can use my uh, brush handle to measure things to double check. And there's nothing wrong with, with doing that as a way to double check your drawing as you go. 
or there's nothing wrong too with doing um, some tracing in the beginning. I would really encourage you to, to develop your drawing ability, but to do a little bit of um, tracing just to, just to get yourself going and over that hurdle and that fear of drawing. So I'm starting out toning our canvas the way we do pretty much every week. I'm mixing ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and a little bit of Gamsol or solvents, turpentine, whatever it is that you're using. I'm using my bushy brush and I'm gonna go ahead and cover the canvas with this loosely. And the cool thing about this technique, so you can't, for those of you who are working with gouache or acrylics, this is not gonna work for that, but this works with oils and it's one reason why I really like oils. Um, it also may, may not work if you're using um, paper that you've just gessoed on or if you're painting directly onto paper. So if you're doing that scenario, that's okay. This isn't the main point of this lesson. I just want to give you guys an option that I think will help you get over some of the fear of drawing. It helps knowing that like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it and I can double check myself. Or I just don't wanna deal with drawing because I feel really intimidated by that. So I'm just gonna give myself a head start. Sometimes it's nice too, like if you're just in a hurry, you don't wanna spend all the time drawing and double checking. So now that we have this toned, we can do a couple things. We can either start doing our drawing. I'm gonna use my other brush for this. This is, this is our synthetic brush with a stiffer bristle. So what we could do is start start drawing um, and then we can use this method to double check, but I'll just go ahead and show you this. If you put your picture right over your canvas with it toned and you use the back of your brush handle, watch it not work now. It usually works. <laughs> But I can create a few, I don't have to trace the whole thing. This is just about creating a few markers for myself. Just some general shapes so I get things in the right place. And you see how that, and it, you know, this is still fine. I can use that. It did work. I'm so relieved. <laughs> But do you see how that now, it just gives me a framework. It doesn't give me all of the detail, but this is so nice when you're doing a face. Um, so what I'll often do, I, I don't start with this. What I'll do is I'll do my drawing and I'll double check with measuring and that's so I can work on my drawing ability. And if I feel like the drawing looks off and I've done all the fixing and the fiddling that I can do and I'm still, it still is not looking right, something is off, then I'll take the picture and put it over it and trace just the main markers, the eyes, the nose, and I'll have to share a picture of this on my blog because then what I'm able to see is, oh, the, the curve of the eye is just a little bit off. Um, the line of the chin, mine was, just a teeny bit higher than that. And it's amazing with a face, those tiny little differences can make a big deal. It's not a big deal here if our flower is a little higher or lower. Somehow I got yellow on my brush. But it's not a big deal. But when you're dealing with a face or if you're trying to capture the likeness of an animal, it's, um, it's really, really helpful. And I'm seeing a lot of like, yay, this is great. <laughs> I like that. So this is one reason why I like oils too, because I can kind of make some, you know, some scratches in there. Um, and that's help. This is really helpful too if you're doing buildings, just to get the lines of the building. So we'll go ahead and let's do a little bit of a value drawing on this. So um, like we did last week, we're gonna ask what's lighter, what's darker. We're not gonna do as detailed of an underpainting as we did, but we're just gonna start to get some of these, um, the light and shadow in place. 
Um, so I'm just looking at where the darker parts. So don't let, I think sometimes painting glass can intimidate people because, um, you know, in our minds, we're so often we're like, oh, I'm drawing glass, I'm drawing glass. Like we kind of psych ourselves out. And it's like, it's just like drawing the pair. We're just going to draw what we see. We're just going to take it bit by bit. I'm still using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I just somehow got a little yellow in there. So now I've got, it's a little more opaque than usual. So we've got this little, um, I did keep this super simple though. We have just a very, I would suggest starting with very simple lines like this, like a little, this is a little Victorian ink bottle. Start with something with really simple lines. We're gonna do, it's almost straight on top. We'll put a little detail in there and then we've got a little bit of a arch there to that bottle. Oops, that is not a straight line. I am not super at painting um, straight lines. Okay, and then we're gonna have a shadow. I'm gonna emphasize the shadow and light a little bit. I took this picture a little later in the day, so I didn't have this really nice, strong, like light coming from one direction. It was cloudy, it was late. So it, it, um, it's nice to do still life paintings that have a bit more um, like a stronger light. So we'll kind of make the light a little bit stronger. We'll just make that up. The thing that I've learned too about painting, because I do photography, for those who don't read my blog, I do photography. And um, what makes a good picture does not necessarily make a good painting. In painting, you want a lot of contrast. You want stronger light. Whereas, especially if you're shooting interiors or people, unless you're going for a specific kind of stylistic thing, you, you kind of want this nice, soft, flat light that's really flattering. You don't want this, you know, your nose looking like a sundial. Nobody wants that. <laughs> so... All right, and then we're gonna draw this stem here. So who did the, the tracing? Did you guys do that? And if so, is that, has, was that helpful for you to just kind of know where things are? And believe it or not, as you, I think sometimes, you know, it's like, well, you, if you, tr if I traced it, then I cheated. And, and it's, that's just not the case. It's like, you're learning again. Would we say that to our kids? Like, oh, that's a nice drawing, honey. But because you drew the lines in the beginning, um, you cheated. That doesn't, it doesn't really count. Which it's like, that was very, that was just the very, very beginning of the painting that we just were getting some reference points. So I don't know, just don't, don't like be hard on yourself. Give yourself time to learn. So we're just sort of getting these leaves loosely drawn out so we know where we want them. And ideally, so with my camera, this, this leaf is a little blurry, but we'll just kind of go with it. We won't draw it blurry though. Okay, we've got this and then a little flower here. If you're gonna do a lot of flowers, like if that's your thing, or even for animals and people, I would suggest getting a brush like this. This is called a short filbert brush. Um, this is also called a cat tongue brush because it's kind of the shape of a cat tongue. And I have all sorts of sizes of these and I love using them for flowers, for petals, because you know it has a nice kind of natural petal shape. It's good for leaves. And it's also really good for animals and portraits. So I use these a lot. This is from Rosemary. 
and Co. It's the Eclipse Short Filbert, but you can get um, filberts anywhere. Just just look for some smaller filberts. It's a good shape to have. Okay, I feel like this is enough to get us started. Before I go any further, I'm gonna grab the camera and just see if there are any questions. Okay. Um, what was the original things you drew from? Is that a photo? So this is a photo that I printed up on my painting. I mean, on my painting, on my printer. Um, this is a photo that I set up and took. So it's my image that you guys have my permission to use. Um, yes, and Carol said a lot of artists do use um, like light boxes or a projector. Um, and, and you can do that. Some people actually draw it and then they use their own measurements to transfer it to a canvas. So there's all kinds of, you know, all kinds of um, methods for doing that. I just like to do it as a double check. And Flynn is asking about, um, or Flan Art, is asking about my easel. And yeah, those are weights on the back. This is a counterweight easel so that I can, um, I don't have to turn cranks if I want to raise and lower it. I can just use my hand and push it up and down. Um, and it holds, I mean, holds enormous canvases. Um, I just am painting really small right now. But I bought a an easel that I could grow with. This is the Sienna Studio Counterweight Easel. And a lot of people have been asking me about easels lately. I would say I knew that painting was something that I really wanted to invest in. So I sold a lot of tiny little paintings for like 10, 15, 20 dollars. I don't think there was a painting that was more than like 20 or 30 dollars. And I just saved up the money from all of those paintings and I bought this easel as an investment in myself and um, it's probably the only one I'll ever need. So uh, I think it's around $1,500 maybe. So if you are, you know, you want a bigger easel but you don't need to quite go that big, then you can, um, I would suggest looking into an H Studio easel and those are on wheels as well. Those just have knobs and cranks and stuff to adjust but they're nice and sturdy and you'll be able to do everything you need with them. Again, I just decided like, I'm gonna take all these little paintings that I'm starting with and selling and I'm going to save up for a really nice easel that I can grow with and I'm really glad I bought it. And I love that it's starting to get, I've used it now for about two and a half years and it's starting to get this nice crusty paint patina on it, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's start mixing some colors. So like we did with the pears, we're gonna start with the bottle and the flowers and then we'll do the background. So let's start on the bottle first. So we need to get a nice kind of turquoisey blue. So let's get some, my blue was really, really drippy. Um, so let's get some ultramarine blue and I need to wipe that up so I don't drip it all over myself. Okay, so we'll get ultramarine blue. We'll get a little bit, um, just a teeny bit of burnt sienna to calm the blue down a little bit. Like I've said before, we're using burnt sienna like an orange to tone down blues and like a red to tone down greens. And then we need to add some yellow. So let's try some yellow ochre. Oh, I didn't go over my colors for everybody because I'm just assuming that you all have been with me the whole time. So the colors we're using are ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cadm uh, sorry, yellow ochre, this is yellow ochre pale, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. And I've suggested now buying alizarin crimson, which is usually right there, and cadmium red. Um, if you wanna do blueberries or 
strawberries or cherries or really as soon when you get more into people and animals you kind of need some reds also if you want to do flowers I'm gonna get some cadmium yellow this color is gonna take a little bit of tweaking here we're too green and definitely too dark at this point so let's add more blue Just like we did last week with like, is it lighter, is it darker? Um, when we're looking at values, um, you can always ask yourself that about the color. If you're like, okay, this color isn't right. So what is it? Is it too red, too blue, too light, too dark? And it kind of helps you with making decisions. So I'm constantly, when I'm painting, like constantly thinking about that. What does this look like? Is this too light, too dark? So I feel like we're getting pretty good here. I'll give it a try. And this will be kind of our base color that we'll use for, we'll keep lightening it for the bottle. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're gonna do the um, shadows of the bottle first. So we just wanna look wherever there's a shadow and just draw it. And I know it's like, yeah, easier said than done. When I went to, um, you know, it, I want to say it was when I went to one of the museums in Paris, I think in um, the Musée d'Orsay where the Impressionist stuff are, or Impressionist works are. I, I was thinking it was there, but I think it was um, in a book that I bought there on the Impressionist. And Monet said, like when he, people would ask him like how to paint, He's like, well, you just, you know, I just look at what's what color is there and I see, oh, oh, that color's there. So I just put that color there. I just put a little spot of color there. And then I just look at the next spot and put another spot of color there, whatever color I see. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if it was that easy. Okay, so I'm just look, just putting anywhere I see a shadow. The top is a little rough. And we may, we'll see how this looks. The, the great thing again is we can go back and if we decide, oh, we need it a little darker here, we can always do that. But we're gonna try to keep this pretty simple. So I'm gonna lighten this color that I have up a little bit more and um, to paint the water, because the water is a little darker. Well, the water that's um, not really the water, I guess, it's the background. With glass, you're, you're painting what is through the glass. And this is just gonna be kind of our first pass and we'll adjust it. This is just getting the color down. The corner is lighter, so I'm gonna leave the corner alone. And we've got, this is kind of a textured bottle. So we don't have a nice clean line. Sometimes in water you do have clean lines. Also what you have is water distorts items. So it can sometimes like the stem looks, is coming in here and then the stem appears over there in the water. Like when you have more of a, a glass that's rounded, you'll get that more. This, this bottle has straight sides. Okay, and then this is a little, this is kind of that darker color appearing. It is interesting though how when you don't second guess too much, you're just like, well, this is what I see. This, I'll just put that color there. When you do that, how, um, just how it all kind of works out. So what's funny guys, you know how I was saying I was so in love with my piece last week? Well, I ended up kind of tweaking it a little bit. <laughs> it was a little, the shadow was a little dark. 
so I did end up going back. I didn't like it as much the next day. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more white and a little bit more um, cadmium yellow, just a touch. We don't want it to get too green, but I just don't want it to be, I want it to be, be a little warmer. So this is gonna be for our lighter colors of the bottle. And we'll come in later and add in a little bit more highlight even. Bottles, I feel like, especially when you're painting them like this or glasses, I feel like those are the kind of things that you always feel like, this is going to be a bit of a mess. And then when you step back and kind of look at it, that helps a lot to step away from your work and look at it. Step out of the room for a minute, get a glass of water, do something, and then come back to it and be like, oh, I see what's wrong. Or I see what I need to do. Kind of gives you some clarity. That's what happened with the pear. I was so in love with it while I was sitting, you know, a foot away from it. And then the next day when I was looking at it across the studio, I was like, this shadow is really dark and the lines are a little hard. So I'm still working with this lightest color. And just, I think I'm gonna put this here because we've got, this is where we have a little bit of an angle. calling me. Yeah. Hey, Marshall, I'm on a live video right now, bud. Hey, Marshall, I can't, um, dad's going to take you to the book return at three 30. Okay. okay. He'll be home soon. All right. Sorry. <laughs> they're, re they're done with school. They're returning their books. Okay. So I put a little bit more white. So I keep kind of mixing down out of my pile and I put a little more white there. And we, we're not going all the way white. We're just, uh, you know, going a little lighter. And I'm just going to keep adding in some of the lighter colors. We don't want to get too light too fast. If you go to your purest white, then you don't have anything, anywhere to go. You always want to save that for the very last thing. Okay, and I'm going to add just a touch of yellow ochre to it. I feel like I want it to look a little warmer back here. We've grown to that place now where I can just be comfortable being quiet. I'm gonna go to one of the mid-tone colors and get the middle of this bottle here. And then it gets maybe a little darker. And then we've got, I'm going to go to my darker color and get the back of the bottle. And kind of just fix a few things here. We're not, now this bottle does have some drops on it. And if you're someone who, there are some artists who, they really like they just love the details all the every little detail of things and i am not one of those people i do not like all the details i just want to that's why impressionist painting kind of 
fits me. I like the, imp you know, okay, I'll draw the impression of a bottle. I'm not going to draw every tiny little detail. So I'm getting a little, my paint just a little bit darker. I want this line here to be a little darker, the line of the water. And I feel like it's looking a little too bulky, this line. And I can see already, I, I'm going to need to go back and add a bit of a darker color. It's, that's not getting quite dark enough. So I'm going to make a little pile off here, off to the side. And with more ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make it darker. The other color we're going to go back and try to get is where the light is really reflecting off the edge of the bottle. You've got this really nice, um, like a brighter turquoise, so we'll go try to get that. And to get some of these more defined edges, I'm kind of hanging my finger off the side. Yeah, some of these just needed to be a little darker. And that's okay. You know, this is, that's very normal. If you even watch, like, people have been doing it a long, who've been doing painting a long, long time, you'll see them, oh, wait, this, this area is too dark. This area is a little too light. We'll go and kind of fix things. Okay, so to get that bright color, I'm gonna work off of our little pile here with a little more cadmium yellow, a little more blue. Try to, I actually might start with a new pile with ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow. Just so it's a nice, like a cleaner color. We want more blue and we get some white. And that's a, if you notice, these are more like grayer blue greens, and then we've got a brighter turquoise here. And maybe even a little lighter. And last week when I was feeling like awesome about the pair this week, I'm like, I don't know about this one. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe not. Feels a little out of my comfort zone. All right. Yeah, I'm not as... Flowers and stuff are not as much my thing. I'm sort of mixing some darker color in here. But again, it's fun. We're just all working together. All learning. Always growing. And there's always times when you're like, this painting's going to be amazing. I'm so ready to do it. And then you do it and it's just a flop. It's just not, not good. Okay, let's work on the flowers. And so I'm going to get, for the leaves, I'm going to get ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, and we're going to get 
more cadmium yellow. We want these leaves to be, these are kind of a nice bright green. I'm gonna put just a teeny itty bitty touch of burnt sienna in there just to tone that green down a little bit. And I'm gonna keep this as my dark green and come in and get the dark green part of the leaf. Then there are times when I'm working on pieces and I'm just certain that something is a disaster. I'm going into this, um, I have a little bit of ultramarine blue here. I'm going into that for the stem in the back here. But I'm just sure that it's something's gonna be a, um, a disaster. I, I don't, I'm not enjoying myself as I'm doing it. It's I just feel like it's not working out well. I'm gonna use the same dark green as just a little where the dark parts are. Just using that. But there are times when I'm just like, it's just not, this is not going well. And then I kind of walk away and I take a step back and I look at it and I'm like, oh, you know, I actually kind of like this. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little more cadmium yellow. and a little bit more. And I'm just gonna brush in the direction of the leaf here. And we've got kind of two leaves here, I think, but I'm gonna just kind of combine them into one. I think it'll just be a little cleaner. We'll add a little brighter highlight to that. And then we gotta go brighter, a little more cadmium yellow. Gonna start adding a little bit of white, just a little white, like this. When you start adding too much white to green, it starts to kinda, especially for living things, it just starts to, I don't know, it kinda, it just doesn't look right. I, I don't even know why that is, but. Okay, and then we've got, we'll make this our brightest leaf. I'm gonna add a little more cadmium yellow and a little more white. But I don't know, everybody breaks the rules on that too. So, oh, we need even more because I want it to be the brightest. Depends on my mood. Sometimes I add more white to greens. And other times I'm like, no, I shouldn't do that. And we want some that's just really a lot of white and cadmium yellow for the highlight. So going even a little lighter. And this leaf is sort of at an angle, so we've got to let that be at an angle, and then we've got a little highlight back there. Oops, got too much paint on the brush. A little highlight back there. And there's definitely a highlight here. And then Okay, and then I'm gonna use this bright color for some of these stems here. You can see how when you do like a whole bouquet, how all of this can get kind of overwhelming all of the stems and all the blossoms and stuff. I um, I don't do a lot of bouquets. I love them, but I just feel like, oh, I feel so overwhelmed with all the detail. So I did a little darker for the bottom of that stem and then I'm gonna go in and add a little more highlight there. We don't want these stems to get too fat, so just be aware of that. 
I've got a little highlight there, a little highlight here, a little leaf highlight, and a little bit here. And we'll add a little, so we want to make a little pile of kind of a brown. So we've got burnt sienna, and we'll add a little ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue makes it darker, makes it a little less orangey. But we wanna keep it brown. These two colors can make a great black, but we don't want black, we just want a brown right now, which actually we may need a black down on this stem. So this stem, we just want this to be kind of blurry. We don't want it to be this nice defined stem because it's in water. Okay, I am gonna mix up a black because I see it's black. So we're just gonna do just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And what's kind of cool, so these two are the exact, it's the exact same combination of colors, but because I have more blue in here, it's looking more black than brown. So we've got this black and I'm gonna get it on sort of the underside here of the stem. And we almost have like this little shadow kind of coming off of it. And this is not a super straight stem anyway, so we just want to keep it really loose. We'll add a little, make that a little darker back there. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the brown here and add a little, got some brown detail in the, these little things, little blossoms. And again, we don't need to paint every little like tiny detail. We're just, it's just giving the impression of these blossoms. With too much paint on my brush there, I'm making a mess. Okay, and the other question we have to ask ourselves is where do we see the stem sort of break up? And we really don't see it. It kind of disappears a little bit um, right here. So we're gonna let that break. I just kind of lost some of my lighter color, so I was mixing up a little more. And then this got just a little, my stem got a little, so if your stem gets a little carried away, just use your watercolor, the color of the water, and cut in around it and kind of fix it.
And I feel like I was trying to draw this little like nub that's coming off and I feel like it got a little like the stem got just a little too big. And then I'm just gonna um, sort of make it a little less clear. Okay, there we go. All right, let me see what questions and comments I had. It's very hard to see what you're doing. The sound is muffled. <laughs> Sorry, Monica. All right, here's what I'm doing. That's how it's looking. Okay, yeah, and Joe, thanks for answering that. The photo's a download from my blog. This is the painting, I mean, this is the picture. It's a picture that I took, so um, you guys have my permission to use it. And if you, yeah, some people say, um, like if it gets blurry, that's an internet issue because it's clear on my camera. So I'm not really, there's just, I can't do anything about your internet or my internet. All right, I'll try to, there we go. Okay, so let's get to the blossoms and then we'll do the background and then we can do kind of some tweaking. Well, first of all, I'm gonna take this green and just do a little we got a little bit of a leaf back there so we'll put a little leaf back in there and I'd like to add um just a little bit more of just a little bit of um burnt sienna with white mixed with white just for a little more warmth in some of these little um, buds. Okay. Even a little bit in the stem. We'll add in the, the highlights of the stem. Those are almost a gray. We'll add those in once we kind of get into, once we have the background done and such. I'm just kind of adding a little bit more of the stem detail there. And so let's do the blossoms. So I wanna start with, we can start with kind of this dark bottle color here and I'm just gonna move it over and add in some white, sort of get a nice, like a neutral gray kind of color. I'm looking at kind of how this color relates to the others on the palette. I want it to be a little lighter. And I'm gonna grab just a teeny touch of yellow ochre so it's a little warmer. So we've got a nice kind of warm, neutral, light gray. And then, so the tendency again is to always paint white flowers white. We reach for the white, but we need to start with, now I'm kind of making stuff up here a little bit um, because we've. I think we have one that doesn't have a blossom. And, so I'm using a little bit of even that dark bottle color to make a little bit of a darker gray since this flower is kind of behind. So I'm making out like we have two buds back here and in our picture we really only have one. And I'll bring that forward a little bit more as we get lighter. Okay, so we've got this little partial petal there there. So we're going to do all of these in kind of a gray and then we'll add a white detail. That's how we can show, 
you know, which petals are further away, which ones are closer. Oops. And then we've got just a little bud here. So we'll just kind of, oops, we'll have to clean that up a little bit when we, <laughs> when we do the background. Okay, so um, I think I'm gonna wait to add the white until we add the background. So I'm gonna start with this dark bottle color here and start doing the background. and then we can do the shadow. Now the thing about bottles that you see a lot of is the, the um, light, um, I guess the shadows are heavier towards the edges and lighter in the middle. And there's almost always this, um, like a little highlight in the middle and that's always kind of cool to capture. We'll use a little bit of our black right under the bottle there to make that a really defined shadow. And it's a little darker right there. And it's even, I can even use our black to make this a little darker back here. Okay, then we're gonna go we're gonna kind of lighten this color up a little bit. And I'm about ready to move to my other brush. I think I'm going to, cause I can cover more ground with it and also it's just a little looser. And I'm just sort of, I'm not going over this to apply more paint. I'm going over it to move the paint around until it's how I want it. I'm going to add a little more white and just a touch of yellow ochre pale. And go in here around the bottle it's lighter here and we're kind of losing that. So again we want to always ask the question is it lighter is it darker and I sort of want I like how the light falls across here and we've got a nice pool of light back here. I want to keep the edges soft, not too hard. We've got, we can get a little bit of color in here. We want a little variation. We can even get a little green. Like this is where, I mean, any of this is just open for interpretation. If you want a little more yellow in there to warm it up, this is the colors you put in your foreground are what make it look like yours. So the shadow is really soft as it moves away. So we want to keep that soft. And we're going to go a little bit darker for the shadow. 
I'm just mixing in that the white with that darker color. Not using enough paint. I'm really being stingy with my paint today for some reason. There are times when I'm like, I don't need to mix up anymore. I can just use what I have. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch back to my other brush so I have just a little bit more control. Um, that brush is feeling a little big. I don't want this line to be quite so harsh. And I want to do, I want to use this turquoise some more, this kind of brighter turquoise that I mixed up. Use that a little bit more in here. to my black and add just a little bit. Okay, and we've got our little highlight is up in the front here. So I'm going to use some titanium white and just a little bit of the colors that I already have mixed. I may even need, we'll see how defined I need to make it, but I've got kind of a little light pile here. I want to make it nice and white. Then I'm going to add a teeny bit of cadmium yellow. That's a little much, so we'll add a little more white. And we'll put a little, this little highlight right there. That was a little too much. So, let's go back. The reason why you see artists paint glass a lot is because there are just so many fun nuances with the way light goes through it. So I'm adding a few more little highlights here with that highlight color, just some white, a little bit of the bottle color, a little bit of cadmium yellow. I don't know what my family is doing out there. I'm hearing like whistling and popping. <laughs> Everybody's home still. I know I'll do a little highlights through here. Okay, and I'm going to go in with my black mixed a little bit with the darker bottle color, and I want to make this color match what's behind it just a little bit better. Do you see how I can kind of see when I look through the camera just how this looks like light reflecting through the glass? It's just so cool how that works. It's such a such a cool effect. Just loosening up this line a little bit.
kind of losing this bright line here, so I'm gonna come in and put that back in. And then I'm gonna go in with my black and kind of make this, oops, I need more paint. This is Marion, use your paint. Put a little more paint on your palette. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. I have plenty of paint. There are times when I'm like, oh, I don't wanna, sorry, I was just hitting the tripod. If you're like, it's vibrating, that was me. I don't know why I do it. There are times when I just don't, like I just am being really stingy with my paint. And if you're not quite getting enough paint, you know, like if you feel like I'm trying to put paint down and I'm just pulling it back up again, it's like you just don't have enough paint. You need to mix up more paint. Give yourself, give yourself a fighting chance. The other thing about impressionism is it tends to be pretty heavy handed with the paint. And if you don't use enough, you're just not gonna get that look. It's, it's always gonna look really thin. Okay, so I was just making that, um, the shadows a little bit darker, just mixing a little more black in. I feel like they just weren't quite dark enough to begin with. I feel like same thing with the long hair. They just need to be a little darker. But it's good that we didn't use our darkest dark right off the bat because then we have somewhere to go with it. If we, just like with the whites, if we go too dark too fast, then we kind of, we can kind of get a little stuck. The whole painting looks really dark or the whole painting looks really light. So I'm going to add just a touch of this highlight to here. This is all little like tweaking stuff. And we'll add a couple of really bright highlights to the bottle too. I'm going to go back in with just a little more black. I keep mixing, again, I keep mixing up piles. It's like just Get what you need. I just feel like I keep, what I'm doing is, I feel like this line is really defined and I feel like I keep kind of just making it real smudgy. And part of the thing about lines is you want some lines to be really clear and some to be to be blurry. If they're all blurry or all clear, it's um, kind of takes some interest away, I think. Okay. So let's do the background and then we'll see how it's all looking. So we just need a nice neutral gray. So I'll even use this black pile and grab some of my, my dirty white. And we'll just start mixing up a pile. Now that's gonna be too dark. And I don't know if I quite want to do the exact color of the, the background that I took in the picture. I might want it to be a little different, we'll see. I'll, I'll try this. So this is just burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, white, and a touch of yellow ochre pale. Just kind of a nice neutral gray. And let's just see how that looks. So this is a case, some people have asked me about um, using linseed oil or something when you're doing something like this this might be a case where I would use it to help this flow a little bit easier because with all the white it can feel a little a little gummy white tends to kind of 
go on thick. Okay, I want to keep these edges nice and soft. Even though this is a really hard edge in the picture in the back, I'm okay if it's not super um, straight or defined. But we'll see. I'll see how I feel about that once we get more paint on. I'm just sort of filling in around things. Some people, their style is to keep this brown, you know, the the underpainting showing, like almost like that, where their their edges don't even meet. They just let the the underpainting show. I tend to cover most of it, let it show through here and there, but I'll make my edges meet. It's okay if around the flowers maybe they show a little bit. This color is really close to what we mixed for the flowers, so we're gonna have to see if we kind of lose them or that's okay. This is also where you can sort of clean up your stems if you want to. I think the tendency too is when people see a scene like this, they just want to like paint the whole background and then paint the flowers on top. And you can do that in acrylics where they dry and all, but you really just can't do that in oils unless you're going to give it time, give it like a few days to dry. I'm going to keep some texture in this background. I think that's kind of interesting. And I don't mind if a little bit of the green kind of mixes in from the leaves. I feel like that's kind of interesting. Let me separate these leaves a little bit. I don't want to blend too much, but having a little green kind of blend just a little is fine. How's everybody doing? Everybody painting? I know some of you just watch, like you do other things or you just want to watch and then you'll paint later because either you've got kids, it's distracting. I just keep adding a little bit more white to the pile. Um, it just kind of continues to shift the color a little bit. And I'm sort of, I'm letting my brush kind of cut out these leaves and again, letting them, it's okay if my brush drags and sort of shapes the leaf a little. And again, that it's just kind of, that's an artistic thing. I just like having those softer edges and a little bit of the color of whatever I'm painting around mix in. But it's up to you. There are people who like really nice clean edges. They don't want any color mixed in. I'm gonna have to switch to my other brush here in a minute. You gotta make this a nice little bud. Now I know this color looks really white 
but it's it's really not. I have this value chart that I made. This is total black, total white, and then I mixed um, and I measured it all out and everything to mix so that I had these clear um, values. And when you look at our background, it's really more in this range. When we think, when we see it, we're like, oh, it's white. It's, it's actually not, this is white. And what's great about that is then we can add the white into the blossoms. And we're going to, it's gonna make them pop out a little bit more. I made the, the value chart similar to if you watched our color chart lesson, sort of that way, but I, it was a bit more methodical because I was really trying to make sure I had clear values. I want to keep that real loose, that stem. sort of like this kind of work. It's just very like, very relaxing. I'll just put my music on and like this part of it because it's really just coloring it in. And then I can just make little artistic decisions about my edges and, okay, so I'm gonna switch to my other brush here. Oh, and some people have asked, I do paint the edges, I do that last. So before I clean off my palette, I'll make sure I get my edges. So I'm switching to this brush, just a little straighter, gives me more control. I just want to make sure I don't get too tight with it. That's that's my problem. When I start doing this, I'm like, okay, relax, <laughs> back up off the brush a little. Paintings are a lot more interesting when they're not too perfect. And my tendency, a few of you have told me this too, like your tendency is just to be tight and like I tend to be tidy and tight. So I've got to remind myself, just like relax, take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, back up off the brush. And I'm always looking over at my picture to say like, okay, is this, does background go here or is it something that else that goes here that I've missed? Okay, I think I got all the background now. All right, let me um let me show you guys a little bit of a closer look and then we'll come in with all the finishing details and I'll look at questions here. All right, let me go back. Okay, someone said, all right, hold on. Okay, so Jo shares a book that she bought that was really helpful. What's the best way to learn how to mix colors? So Tracy, I would tell you to do the color chart lesson if you didn't. Um, that is, I think, the best way to learn about mixing colors is to actually mix colors. Um, books, there are some books that can be really helpful guides, but I, it definitely can't replace just mixing your own colors because even just, 
even just ultramarine blue, for example, there's French ultramarine blue, there's ultramarine blue green shade. Every brand has a slightly different ultramarine blue. Some of them lean a little more purple, some lean a little more green, and that can make a tremendous difference when you're mixing your color. So if somebody says, the way you get this color is with you know, two parts ultramarine blue and one part burnt sienna, if you're not using the same colors, it might be, it might be difficult. So um, mixing your own paints is always the best way. So Susan says, I think my paints may be too old. I notice how yours flow. You don't have to scrub the paint on, but you have a very light touch. So yeah, if your, your paints might be too thick or stiff, if you feel like you're fighting your paint, then by all means, go ahead and mix in some linseed oil or some um, other medium that's gonna thin it out. Elaine, this is oil. Um, so Joe said she uses um, Gamblin solvent-free gel that it helps um, the paint flow well. I just, I found that if I use really high quality paints, I just very rarely have to mix in um, any kind of solvents. I do have, so I use Gamsol in the beginning to thin things down. And then I do have a little bottle of linseed oil. Whoops, you can't see it, there we go. I have a little bottle of linseed oil that I'll use. I'll pour it into a little cup and I'll use that if I need to thin it out, especially with whites, if it's getting thick. And then I have this custom oil medium, and I this is my favorite. This is, I got it out of Carol Marine's book called Daily Painting, and it's a mix of linseed oil, stand oil, which is just a thicker linseed oil, and um, Gamsol. And it's a great mix. I like it better than just um, plain old linseed oil. So I'll use that if I need to. And I didn't use it just because I didn't have my cups. So I just, you know, this paint is pretty thick here. This because it's got a lot of white in it. But the rest of my colors have been pretty easy to work with. So if, if you're kind of fighting your paints, then add, just add a little more linseed oil and that's fine. Even if I don't, you can add it. Um, ever be willing to teach a class using a silver pitcher or a gravy boat? I tell you what, I'd have to practice it first. <laughs> um, Valley says the shadows look so real. Thank you. Um, and Tina, yeah, you can use linseed oil or not. It, it really, there are some artists who use it all the time and other artists who don't use it at all. I use it sometimes. I don't use it all the time. Um, uh, I bought cadmium yellow and I did a color chart with ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow, but didn't get green. To me, that's like something's really off if you mix ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow and you don't get it green. So maybe you can always um, email me, Emmeline, and let me know, um, you know, what you got. Because if you mix blue and green, blue and yellow of anything, you should get green. So something sounds off to me. Um, can you save the oil paints longer by covering them in plastic or freezing? So some people do that. Um, I don't, I don't do that. Um, the plastic for me, I think is going to pull off more paint than it's going to save. And, um, since I use my palette regularly, I don't, I just keep using the paints. I don't cover it in plastic and I don't put this in the freezer because, um, some of the paints are toxic and I don't want to have it in my kitchen. Um, so if you had a freezer that was just like your studio freezer and a palette would fit in it, then you can definitely do that. Um, let me show you a little bit of a closer look so you can see all my texture. And if you see when I back up a little bit where I added more white, just the subtle shift of color makes a big difference. And that wasn't even really intentional. And I see how... Like I've got this little darker patch here and here. So I'm actually going to use a little white, add a little more white to my mix here. And I'm going to kind of add a little bit of a lighter color in there. But yeah, I love um, the texture that you can get with these bushy brushes. Well, maybe... Okay. 
All right, I think I got all the comments, so let's do some finishing details here. I am feeling better about this. I'll tell you guys, in the beginning, I was really not feeling great about this. <laughs> I was just not. I think the bottle is not the star of the show. The bottle is not my favorite. And maybe we'll, as we do finishing details, we'll try to kind of fix that. So I'm going to use the background color and just with this brush kind of try to adjust that stem a little bit more. I'm using, I so between passes, I'm wiping the paint off with a paper towel just to keep it a little cleaner. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more of this highlight back and we kind of lost this leaf a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with my darker leaf color back here so it's clear that this is set back even a little darker because so I can see back here there's a little bit of a shadow. And then this is a highlight. And then I've got a little highlight here. And then we've got almost a white highlight at the front. So I'm gonna add even a little more white and a little more cadmium yellow. And make this even. Then I'm coming in with a little bit of that brown I had and kind of fixing up these stems a little bit. We've kind of lost some of these details. And now I need to add some of these highlight details. So I've got a little bit of uh, burnt sienna that I'm mixing with some white down here and it's got just a little ultramarine blue in it and I'm gonna use this maybe a little more burnt sienna use this as a little bit of a highlight on the edge of the bud a little bit of highlight there. okay now we're going to get the flowers so I make a mess of my colors when I'm painting. And so what I'm gonna do when I need my pure white is I'm gonna go to the back and get some pure white out. What some artists will do, cause see even my brush is still like not super clean. What some artists will do is they'll have a brush to use at the end just for their highlights so that their highlights are nice and clean. So I'm gonna use a clean paper towel and wipe my brush a little bit better. And I'm gonna use white and a touch of cadmium yellow, just like a teeny tiny bit. And a little more white. Now on the palette, it looks yellow. Well, at least to me, it looks yellow but it's just a nice creamy white. I'm gonna add maybe even a little more white. Plain old white can look a little stark. Adding a little cadmium yellow makes it look a little, you know, a little sunlit. Okay, so let's, and I'm gonna keep these petals on the chunkier side. And I'm not painting every petal I'm only painting, I'm saying that like I'm talking to kids or something. I'm only painting just the, the front petals. And I'm trying to put it on pretty thick.
And some of it I'll maybe blend a little bit. So I'm just kind of working on it as it looks good to me. I'm, I don't know, maybe we'll put a couple of these little, um, I don't even know what to call them, the little things coming out. We can do a couple of those. I don't think we need to get carried away with them. teeny bit right there. I'm not going to worry. Really, I might put maybe a touch of white back here. We want this to kind of be in shadow though. This little blossom back here. And then I think we kind of lost a little bright green leaf. Kind of these little leaves that go back. And then maybe a little bit right here. So I'm just going into all the colors that I've mixed before and just kind of picking them back up again and using them where I need them. And I'm going to get the kind of brown and shape this up a little bit more. Need more paint. And I need to mix up a little more black. Just to get this shadow side here. Need a little bit of definition there, but that's a little, I've got to come back in with the background color here and kind of shape that up. And we kind of, again, I'm kind of making things up back here a little bit, but I'm going to add a few little dark green leaves. Maybe add a little, my family's getting ready to go to the book thing. <laughs> so I feel like this little bud here, I just can't get it right. I'm trying to get like that little bulb part of it. There we go. That's a little better and then cut in a little bit with the background color. Okay. Just gonna put a little more paint around there. Okay, I feel like we're getting pretty close to done here. I think I'm going to go in and get a little bit more of this um, kind of paler bottle color in there. We need to add a few highlights to our bottle. That's what I'm 
gonna need to do. I'm gonna put a little bit of our background color in here that we're seeing through the bottle just to kind of harmonize that a little bit. The other thing I'm trying to look at is where the bottle starts to get a little thinner. I feel like in some of the places my bottle's looking a little, like a little clunky maybe. And then um, we've got to add some highlights. So I'm gonna go back, you know, get some nice clean white, go back to where my highlights are and I want um, this to be more white, a little less yellow. So I'm adding more white to my highlight pile. And we'll get some bottle highlights in here. That one ended up being a little bit too much, so we'll kind of borrow from that pile. All right. Maybe have a little bit of, a little bit more of one down here. Okay, I feel like at least for now, who knows when I look at it tomorrow, <laughs> how I'll feel about it. But there we go. Let me go ahead and see if there are any questions. Maybe, you know what, maybe I'll soften this real quick. I don't need that highlight quite as stark. Let the ones on the other side be a little stronger. And then I might just put in a little more color. I'm just putting in some of the greens put in a little bit more like yellow highlight maybe down in the front here. There is a little bit of a of a highlight coming off of the bottle this way that we can do. There we go. I like that. It added a little, just a little bit. And do you see in the picture how we have just a teeny highlight coming off here? So we kind of got that. Okay. There you go. I'm scrolling back through to look. 
Yeah, and Linda, I think I already answered this question, but um, yeah, this is a picture that I took that I'm painting, and it's a picture I took, so you have permission to, you know, to use it royalty-free. Um, I realized the edge of this bottle here, I kind of lost that. Doesn't need to be super detailed, but we want the bottle to have an edge there. we go. Um, okay, let me see what other questions. Somebody said no sound. Can you guys hear me? Oops. <laughs> There's my face really close. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm using my cell phone. So when I turn my phone, oh yeah, I think if I turn my face away a little bit, maybe you couldn't hear as well. So sorry for that. I think also sometimes I was kind of being a little Zen. So I was not, um, talking loud. Okay. And you guys are saying, yes, you can hear me. All right. So as always, I will show this painting, um, a close up on my blog so that you guys can see it. Uh, better and sometimes it's easier to paint off of a painting so if painting off the picture is hard for you you can print up my painting and paint off the painting um, but there we go there's kind of a side by side of the um, inspiration picture and then my interpretation of it and um, yeah ultimately it turned out I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I'll have to wait and see how I feel about it tomorrow <laughs> But um, as always, I'd love for you guys to share your paintings with me. You can tag me on Instagram with at Miss Mustard Seed, or you can send me an email, and um, and I'd be happy to, uh, I'd love to respond to that, um, encourage you, answer questions, and if you share on your stories or on your grid and tag me, then I'll share it with my audience as well and give you some encouragement. Um, I think next week I'm going to go ahead and take the week off. I know for a lot of you too, like where school's ending, a lot of people now, the stay-at-home orders are being lifted and people are going back to work. And um, I have a lot of big projects coming up. So I have to kind of look at my schedule and balance out what I can do, what I can continue to do. So I'm thinking I'll take next week off and then kind of plan for what we can do next. So we'll keep doing painting classes. Um, we may do them something like every other week or once a month. Um, but what I would like to do after this is start moving into... Um, maybe I know some people have said they'd like to do some more landscapes, like focusing on trees and some other things. We can also, um, work on animals and, um, portraits. So those are some things that I think are, are coming up, but we'll take next week off. If you missed any of the videos, you can go back and watch them on my blog. You can watch them on my Facebook page or on YouTube and, um, and of course, all the details and stuff are on my blog as well. So the next time we have a class, I'll definitely share. Just look on my blog or on Instagram, and um, I'll be sharing the details there. So thanks a lot, everybody. I look forward to seeing how your paintings turned out. Make sure you sign them. I'll, I'll do that real quick um, just to show because people ask. I use a rubber brush, and I scratch out my signature. There we go. And that's what I do to sign my paintings. And then I'm gonna, before I clean things up, I'm gonna paint the edges um, with my leftover paint here. And then I'll move my leftover paint over to my leftover paint pile, and I'll, which my ultramarine blue is running into it. But I'll just keep using these colors um, just when, whenever they work for me, which for this, I may have used those for the backdrop and stuff, just mixed them all together. But um, I wanted to start with clean colors for you guys so that you knew what I was mixing. So, all right, everybody, thanks very much and have a great weekend.